Hello and welcome. My name is George and my channel is all about helping you get the most out of Logic Pro so that you can record and produce your best music in your home studio. Today we're going to look at using EQ to help shape the tone of our guitar as well as create a little bit of room in our mix for some other instruments. So let's dive in. Here I've got a session from a group called Moon Drifter and with their song Nowhere. It's a fairly guitar heavy song, so I'm going to show you how I'm going to approach EQing those guitars. So here's my main rhythm guitar track. Now you'll see there's actually two guitar tracks. This is the same track, same take, just recorded with two different mics. So we have one track with an SM57 and that sounds like this. So this was recorded with the SM57 right up against the guitar amp. And then we had a second mic, a Rode NT2A in a figure eight pattern, probably about one or two feet away from the amp. And that sounds like this. So you can hear that most of the body of the sound is in the SM57 mic, but the Rode just gives it a bit more of that top end airiness sound. I don't particularly like the sound that it gets on its own, but I do like it when it's blended in with the SM57. So together those sound like this. So now let's look at applying a little bit of EQ to this guitar track. So first off, you'll notice I have these set up as a track stack. So both these mics are getting sent to one track. That means I can apply my EQ just to the one track rather than do it individually on the SM57 mic and the Rode mic. I can just take my blended signal and put an EQ right on that. So that's what I'm going to do. So that's my track right here. And a quick shortcut to get to the EQ is just to click right here in this box that says EQ and now your EQ is gonna show up. Now the first thing I do with most electric guitars and most instruments in general, except for bass and kick drum, is to actually take out some of the low end. So to do that, I apply a high pass filter, which is found right here. So click that and that'll turn that on. And now I'm gonna adjust the frequency to filter out some of the low end. So I'll play the track and then I'll adjust that as I go. So there you heard as I started going further up here, then the guitar started to thin out quite a bit. We don't want that of course, but what we do want is just to take a little bit out here so that that's going to let our bass and our kick drum come through a little bit more because those are frequencies that are going to be occupied by those instruments. Now by removing around 130 hertz and below, we're not significantly altering the tone of the guitar, but we're gonna be letting room for the bass and kick drum come through. So our guitar is not gonna muddy up those instruments in the low end. I'll mention quickly, you might've seen the little frequency analyzer go as I was playing. So that's just this button right here. So you can turn that on and off and that just shows you the frequency curve of the instrument as it's playing. Now the EQ decisions that you make with an electric guitar are gonna depend a lot on how the electric guitar was recorded. And I suggest you try and get the tone you want as closely as possible from the amp when you're recording it and just using the EQ and Logic later on to do any subtle tweaks and help clean up your mix a little bit. But any big changes should ideally be done at the source using your guitar amp. So the next thing I'm gonna do is carve out a little bit more in the low end 
again, just to let some of the other instruments come through. As you can see here, there's a lot of guitar tracks. So if we don't carve out some more space on the low end, it's just gonna get really muddy really quickly. So again, I'm gonna press play, and then I'm gonna start by kind of boosting and then hearing if there's anything that sticks out to me that's a bit unpleasant, and then I'm gonna to decide to cut those frequencies afterwards. Okay, so I was hearing a bit of honkiness kind of around this area, so I decided to pull a few decibels out of there. So we're currently pulling out 3.1 decibels around 324 hertz. The next thing I'm gonna do is actually brighten it up a little bit. So I'm gonna apply a high shelf. So this means that for wherever I set my shelf, it's gonna boost from that amount and upwards. So I'll show you what I mean. So there I boosted from 5K, 5,000 hertz, 3 dB, and above. And that just kind of gives a little bit more air in the guitar amp, and it's just going to let it cut through the mix a little bit more. So I'm going to do one more boost, which is going to be in the area that I find most pleasing from this guitar amp. And that's just going to let that frequency area come through the most. So I'm going to press play. I'm going to do a big boost and sweep through and try and key in on the frequency that I think sounds best. Okay, so I'm liking that area right there. So I'm gonna do a little boost there. And again, my boost is around 3 dB. That's kind of the magic number for me. In most cases, you don't wanna boost much more than three decibels because that's when things start sounding a little bit unnatural. 3 dB is kind of a nice number to start with when you're boosting. When it comes to cutting, if there's some frequencies that are really sticking out, you can cut much more than 3 dB. But when it comes to boosting, that's when you have to be a little bit careful so that things don't start sounding too unnatural. Now, one area with electric guitars to be a little bit careful of is kind of around this two and a half to three, four K region. Uh, it can get a little bit harsh when you start boosting. And you might've heard that when I was sweeping along here. And I did notice one frequency in particular that was sticking out quite a bit. So I'm gonna try and pull that out a little bit and clean that up. Now, so far we've been doing some pretty wide boosts and cuts. So that means we have a wide Q which you can adjust right here. So this would be narrow and this is wider. And you can also click here and adjust with these points as well. But for this next one, since I'm gonna be zoning on on one specific frequency, it's gonna be quite narrow. And you'll see that in a second.
So as you saw there, I'm actually cutting that out really narrowly and quite a bit at minus 10.5 decibels. So now let's do a little bit of a before and after and see how that sounds. So as you can hear, as soon as I turn off the EQ, it gets pretty woofy sounding. That's gonna end up muddying up the bass and it's just not cutting through as much as it could or should. So I'm pretty happy with that. So let's have a listen with the entire track. And once again, I'll turn the EQ on and off so you can hear the difference. In my hometown, I'll walk the alleyway. So hopefully you can hear there with the EQ, the guitars just cut through a little bit more, as well as they're not clouding up the bass and the drums either. So just to review how we approach these electric guitars, we put a high pass filter to cut out some of that low end that's not really needed. We then carved out a little bit of the muddiness at 324 here. Then we added, we brightened it up a little bit with the high shelf. Now the guitar is already really bright, you might not need to do this, but that's something you can experiment with, as well as where the high shelf actually starts. So in this case, we went with 5,000 Hertz. Next, we did a sweep through the frequency range to kind of pinpoint and pick out the frequency that was most pleasing to us. So the area where we wanna bring out the guitar the most. And for us with this amp was around a thousand hertz. Now, a lot of the times this might be all you need, but if you start hearing some frequencies poke out that are a little piercing like I did, then you might wanna do some narrow cuts like we did here. So I hope that helps clarify EQing electric guitars for you. If you have any questions, please leave those in the comments. If you wanna improve your workflow in Logic Pro, don't forget to download my free Logic Pro hotkey cheat sheet by following the link in the description below. I hope you enjoyed the video and we'll see you in the next one. Nowhere to run, nowhere to